Hi, I'm Julie King and I'm a Chemical Safety Specialist with Environmental Health and Safety here at Rice University. These are my colleagues Petko Ivanov and Chris Mize. Rice is a renowned research university and much of that research occurs in a laboratory environment. This video will go over some basic laboratory procedures to help you have a safe and productive laboratory experience. This video is not meant to be a comprehensive guide in laboratory safety, nor does it fulfill any graduate or undergraduate requirements. Also, all of the rules and regulations found here in this video, plus many more, can be found on our website at safety.rice.edu. Let's head over to the lab. Personalized protective equipment, or PPE, is specialized equipment worn by lab personnel to protect them against hazardous material. Clothing shouldn't be loose so that you don't knock anything over. Your shoes should be closed-toed and cover the entire foot. Shorts, short pants, and short skirts are also not allowed in the laboratory. Petco here is the perfect example of how not to dress. Now let's discuss some other forms of personal protective equipment. When working in the lab, safety glasses or goggles are required to be worn at all times. If you're working with high volumes or volatile substances, then chemical splash goggles are appropriate. If you're working with cryogens, or any hazardous processes, then a face shield is required. Gloves also need to be worn at all times. They are made of many different materials. Please consult your MSDS to determine the appropriate type. Cryogen gloves are to be used when working with any type of cryogen, and autoclave gloves are to be used when working with an autoclave or any hot materials. Before beginning work in the laboratory, it's important to locate the following items your spill kit, your first aid kit, fire extinguisher, and the closest in any alternate exits. It's also important to know the location of the safety shower and eye wash station in your lab. If your clothes catch on fire or a large amount of chemicals are spilled on them, you stand under the safety shower, pull the handle down, and remember to remove any contaminated clothing quickly. If hazardous materials get in contact with your eyes, hold them open and flush them with water until help arrives. After any injury or emergency, contact RUPD at 713-348-6000 or extension 6000 from any campus telephone. Make sure to know your building and room number so you can communicate that clearly and fill out an accident injury report form. A lab coat should be worn at all times when working with hazardous materials. The sleeve should remain rolled down and you should take it off before you exit the lab. Wait. Food or drink are also never allowed in the lab. When working with chemicals in the laboratory, you want to be familiar with the hazards they pose, both to your health and in their ability to react with other chemicals. Refer to a safety data sheet or a material safety data sheet to learn about proper handling instructions, storage instructions, and also any PPE requirements. Safety data sheets will also contain these pictures which will indicate the health hazards or the hazards associated with each chemical. The most common ones include acute toxins, long-term health hazards, oxidizers, gases under pressure, corrosives, flammables, explosives, environmental hazards, and general health warnings. When you work with volatile substances or hazardous chemicals, you'll want to be sure and work in a chemical fume hood, so it's important you know how to use one. You want to raise the sash only up to the maximum operating height, which is either 14 or 18 inches. Also, never put your head in the fume hood to look at a product. Large pieces of equipment and lots of chemicals can block airflow, which means you're not being properly protected against what you're working with. So avoid putting lots of chemicals and large pieces of equipment in the fume hood. Also, close the fume hood at the end of each day or when it's not in use. Sharps is a general term that we use to reference sharp objects, such as syringes with needles, unsheathed razor blades, broken glass, or scalpels. These objects cannot be thrown away in the regular trash. When you're finished using metal sharps, you can place them in a red, plastic, hard-sided container such as this one. When this gets full, you can place it in your biohazard burn box if it's contaminated with biohazardous materials, or you can place it in your glass trash box if it's not contaminated with biohazards. Speaking of glass trash, whenever you break something made of glass, you want to be sure and pick it up with a broom and dustpan and not your hands. The glass trash can be used also for things like test tubes, glass slides, and glass 
Pasteur pipettes. Never put glass into the regular trash. Whenever there's a spill in the laboratory, the first thing you want to do is always alert your instructor or alert others in the laboratory so that they don't come in the area of the spill. Assess the situation and make sure you can clean it up yourself and don't be afraid to call for help if you do need help cleaning up a spill. You can either call environmental health and safety or if you need to evacuate the building, you could pull the fire alarm pull station located outside the laboratory. If you do decide to clean up the spill for yourself, know where your spill kit is and know how to use it. I'm going to go over very briefly some of the items in the spill kit. When cleaning up a spill, you want to first create a barrier around the spill with, a, with an absorbent material. You can also use kitty litter. You want to then cover over the spill with more absorbent material to soak up the spill. Be sure to wipe up all of the spilled material and dispose of the spilled material and any contaminated PPE into a solid hazard waste bag and then call environmental health and safety for pickup. Biohazards are agents of a biological origin that have the potential to produce harmful effects in humans. This can include microorganisms, toxins, as well as allergens. When they are working with any kind of biological materials, it's important to treat them as though they are biohazardous. This means taking measures to protect yourself, other people, as well as the environment. Whenever working with biological materials, make sure to throw them away in an appropriate biohazardous waste container. If you're only working with chemicals, throw them away in a hazardous waste container. If there's a small fire in the lab, you can use the fire extinguisher to put it out. Just follow the instructions on the side and remember the acronym PASS. Pull the pin, aim the nozzle, Squeeze the trigger and sweep from side to side. Make sure to discharge the entire fire extinguisher before leaving the lab, closing the door, and activating the nearest pull station. In the event of a fire, make sure you know where the nearest fire alarm pull station is located. These can generally be found next to an exit leading out of the building or the nearest staircase. Make sure to activate the fire alarm as you're leaving the building and call RUPD. So this has been our introduction to laboratory safety. Remember, if you need emergency help, you can call Rice University Police Department at 713-348-6000 or 6000 from any campus phone. Environmental Health and Safety is available at 713-348-4444. Thank you.